Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing some more dressing rules I think everyone should learn. Now, just like the first video in this series, these are not to say you must do these things or you'll never be stylish or put together, but instead, these are things that I've learned over the years that have really helped me shop smarter and put together outfits in a more thoughtful way to really get the result that I wanted. So I'm able to truly cultivate my wardrobe so that it works for me for more than just one season. And instead, I can have things around for many years and always be cultivating personal style over fashion. So I hope that you find these helpful and let's get started. One of the best ways to ensure that you're building a wardrobe that you'll have for a long time is to look for the highest quality item that you can personally afford. So this can be kind of daunting at first. It's something that can be hard to understand. And especially if you're trying to reteach yourself a lot of old habits, it can be really overwhelming. So I've put together a pretty quick way to determine if something is high quality. And that is to look for the three F's. So the first F is going to be fabric. I recommend finding preferably a natural fiber, something that will be able to biodegrade if it does end up in a landfill. These fibers tend to be easier to care for, they tend to last a lot longer, and they just look nicer. So even if you have an item in a synthetic and then an item in a natural fiber, in my experience, the items in the natural fibers last longer and they look nicer even though they've been around for a couple years in your closet. So you can keep reaching for them and really enjoying them for the long haul. Next is finish. A well-made, high-quality piece will have indicators that it was finished with care, things that indicate the piece was built to last. So you're going to want to look for things like even secure stitching. If you pull it apart gently, do you see light straight through the stitching? Probably not a good indicator that it was made well. Very even zippers that go up and down nicely. Bonus points if it's a YKK zipper. Those are really high quality zippers. And then look at the buttons if there's buttons on the piece. Make sure they line up with the buttonholes and that the buttons are nice and secure. Make sure the buttonholes have been finished. Make sure that all of the seams and stitching is just very pleasing to the eye. And then also look at patterns. I find that that's a really fast way to determine if something has been made to last or not, because the pattern will have been placed appropriately. So they will have very thoughtfully put it together so the flower continues on the sleeve, for example, or the stripes aren't broken up into incongruent kind of blotches. And those are all things that are very easy to spot. And as soon as you start to train yourself, you can really start to notice them very, very quickly. And the last F stands for fit. A well-made, high-quality piece of clothing should fit pretty well straight off the rack, even before you tailor things to really be perfect for you. So you're going to want to look for indicators of that. And for example, a well-made shirt will fit pretty nicely in the shoulders. It should have distinct shoulder seams, clean shoulder lines, and an even sleeve length. You'd be amazed sometimes when you really start looking for these things. I've seen shirts that are tailored button-ups, for example, and the sleeves are almost completely different lengths. And just little things like that really are large indicators of the overall quality of a piece. My next dressing rule I think everyone should know is to avoid outlets and TJ Maxx and Marshalls and stores like that when in pursuit of high quality items. And the reason for that is because when these places were set up originally many years ago, they were done so to serve as overflow. So you would have a brand or a designer and things wouldn't sell completely through in the past season. So those items would then be moved to an outlet store or a TJ Maxx, a Marshalls. But that's no longer the case. And now what's happened is we have certain designers that many of us associate with high quality and they know that. So what they've done is they've decreased the quality and now are manufacturing things specifically for outlet stores, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, places like that. So what you're getting is a lesser item with a brand name slapped on it basically. So my recommendation instead is to always shop in pursuit of quality. Try to avoid getting trapped into the brand recognition trap and instead know that quality is dependent on every individual thing. And the more you train yourself to spot that, the better your wardrobe will be in the long run. And if there is a designer good that you're really coveting but can't really afford, I recommend saving your pennies. <laughs> it's something I do a lot. I'll link my video about how to save for a, a big purchases somewhere here for you. 
And then check eBay, Etsy, Poshmark. The secondhand market is chock full of beautiful designer goods that most of the time haven't even been used. And it's how I've personally been able to build my wardrobe and really add things to it that I wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. So that's my recommendation. And I think it opens up a whole world of possibility when you start doing that. On the topic of shopping, my next two dressing rules are also kind of like fashion hacks, but they're things you can use when you're at a flea market or a thrift store. Maybe you don't have time to try something on, or maybe you just want to help yourself narrow down your choices so you don't take 12 sizes to the dressing room and instead you can bring maybe one or two. And the first one is to determine if pants are going to fit. So this is so easy. All you do is you take the pants and if they fit really nicely around your neck and the ends touch on the waistband, chances are those are going to fit you perfectly. The second one is to determine if a shirt is going to fit you. And this is one that my grandma taught my mom and then my mom taught me and I've used it so many times. You just take the shirt, you grab it under the armpits, right at where the bust lines would be, right here, and then you hold it up to yourself. If that seam comes exactly halfway on the side of your body, underneath your armpit, it is probably going to fit you. I can't tell you how many times I've used this and it truly never fails. It's so fast, so easy, and it saved me a lot of time and frustration. In my last video, I gave a crash course in colors and kind of a recommendation to pair cool with cool or warm with warm when in kind of a rush and if you're kind of stumped on what colors to wear together. It's a good way to make your outfit look very cohesive. So I have another tip along those same lines and that is when in doubt, match your shoes to at least one other thing in your outfit. So that can be something as simple as matching your shoes to your belt or matching your shoes to your purse but I like to take it one step further and try to match my shoes to my shirt or my pants. And especially in the winter and the fall, when I wear black pants, for example, and then a black boot, and I have that really long lean line, it's just so flattering, it looks so great, it looks so chic, and it's something that has helped me put together outfits so quickly. So I definitely recommend practicing that and really starting to pay attention. Some of the outfits that you love the most on yourself very likely already do that. And I think it's an underutilized dressing rule. Speaking of color, my next dressing rule is that I think every well-dressed person should have a personalized color palette for their wardrobe. So colors that they love to wear and colors that all mix and match really easily together. When I first did this many years ago and really started to work on it and figure out those colors for myself, I was amazed at the results it had for my wardrobe. Not only do, do, does everything kind of go together, so I kind of triple the amount of clothes that I have in a sense, but I'm able to get dressed very quickly. I can almost mindlessly pair things together because everything will go very beautifully together. So I recommend finding that for yourself. It can be kind of a lengthy process, but there are so many amazing videos here on YouTube all about finding your color palette. I've done a few, I'll link them here for you. But as a starting point, I recommend finding at least one base neutral color, something that can act as a foundation for every other color you wanna put on top of that. So that can be something like black, navy, brown, gray, camel, any of those colors we tend to think of as nice foundations. But have fun with this. This can also be a very vibrant color, like a purple, for example. And then for an accent color, I recommend finding something that really makes you feel your best. When you put it on, it's truly your power color. Your eyes sparkle, your teeth look super white, your skin looks really even, and you just feel dynamite. That is gonna be a great place to start. And that can serve as a beautiful way to really add your personal style to your wardrobe. So for example, I love black, I love navy and I love light blue. And those three colors I wear all year long. And I'm able to mix and match all of those really easily together and they all make me feel my best. So having a bunch of items in that color palette makes getting dressed so easy and it makes shopping a lot easier too because I just go to things that are in my color palette and I'm not distracted by all of the other things. 
I highly, highly recommend it. And there you have it. Those are some more dressing rules I think everyone should learn. I hope that these are helpful and I'm really excited to make even more in this series. I already have another one planned for you. And then I'm thinking about doing one specifically for the holidays. But as always, please don't ever hesitate to let me know any special requests that you have in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.